Hello, and welcome to Really Spicy Opera's Aria Institute Showcase Concert, Mezzo Edition. My name is Anne Wieben. I am one of the co-directors of the Institute, along with Basil Considine and Tess Altiveros. We are so excited to share with you a smattering of pieces that were created during this latest installment of the ARIA Institute. But before we get to the music, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the ARIA Institute and how this process works. So this is a completely virtual project, which I think is also interesting. It allows people from all over the globe, all kinds of different time zones to come together and create. So we gather together as a group on Friday. We talk about opera, we talk about compositional style, things like that. And then we put the composers and the librettists into pairs. And every week it's a different pairing. So then this pair gets a prompt and 48 hours to create a first draft of an aria. Now that's fast, that's a lot of work. <laughs> uh, we co-directors then meet virtually with the pair, take a look at the draft, talk about what's working, what maybe isn't working, things to make it more singer friendly or pianist friendly, any help that we can offer to make the piece really shine. The pair then has a few more days to perfect the draft, turn it into a final piece. We then take that piece, send it off to our resident artists, a, p a pianist and a singer. They then put it together. And then one week after that initial prompt, we gather together again as a group virtually, and we listen to all the wonderful music that was created. Bear in mind, this is really one week, only one week, that is so fast. And I think you'll be astonished when you listen to the pieces, how good it is. <laughs> this is a tremendous group and I am so excited for all of you to hear the fruits of their very, very intense labor. We at Really Spicy Opera, we co-directors, um, we focus on a performer performance-based feedback process. We wanna make sure these pieces are singer friendly, pianist friendly, so that these pieces get heard, yeah? I myself am an, am an opera singer, Tess is also an opera singer, and Basil is a composer. So we're able to hopefully really help our participants create the most singable, playable piece possible. So without further ado, let's listen to the music. What would an alien language sound like? How could you capture that sound in music? These are just some of the questions facing our writers when the team of Ellen Denham and Delshawn Taylor was given a prompt to write in less than a week. An aria about a scientist making a wonderful and profound discovery. If that sounds like a rapid pace, it is. But it's also how most operas were written before the 20th century. Mozart wrote The Marriage of Figaro in just six weeks. Rossini wrote The Rubber Seville in less than three. Even slowed down by an incomplete libretto, Donizetti turned in a complete draft of Lucia de Lammermoor in less than a month and a half after he began, and that was just one of the three operas he wrote that year. In recent decades, however, it's become the norm, even the expectation, that writing an opera takes years of agonizing, tortured labor. Much can be lost or never appear at all through too much revision. In the ARIA Institute, one of the things that we work on is helping writers to unlock the floodgates of creativity by working quickly, to seize on an idea and write with unfettered speed, and then work with our creative team to polish the work. It's certainly a lot of work. The first draft of the text arrives only 20 hours after they got the prompt, and the first draft of the music is due a day later. But like all things that you practice, it gets easier and faster the more you exercise the skill. At the start of this aria, a scientist on an extraplanetary mission has just made a fascinating discovery. There is intelligent alien life on this planet. As she deciphers their language, she comes to an important realization. This is through gold we perceive from an imagined opera entitled The Singing Stones. When I was a little girl, I had a rock collection. My favorite was peacock copper. I never dreamed boxcar sing. Thank you. 
at a restaurant with a twist. This is the prompt that we gave to the writing team of Susan Bradley Smith and Ryan Leo Helmut. To see what they made from this, let's dive a century into the past to the women's suffrage movement in the United Kingdom. Lest you think that everything during that time was prim and proper, these women did not mess around in their campaign for the right to vote. In addition to the familiar public rallies, many suffragettes engaged in vandalism, bombings, and arson. In this aria, taken from the imagined opera Seaside Suffragettes, Florence writes a letter to her mother while planning to burn down the very ocean pier and restaurant in which she sits. Needless to say, passions run high, and later in the opera, flames run even higher. This is Send Me Memories. Oh, oh. 
Writing an opera from scratch is tricky work. Too often creative ferment runs wild and people get lost in world building rather than starting with creating musical dramatic events and seeing what surprises resonate with them. To escape the rabbit hole of too much imagination and learn to embrace a more spontaneous way of writing, we ask some of our writers to work with the familiar. Whether ancient mythology or contemporary pop culture or sometimes a bit of both. This next aria, with lyrics by Carol Gao and music by Monica Chu, is one of two pieces to take inspiration from one of the most influential pieces of literature written in the 20th century, J.R.R. Tolkien's book trilogy, The Lord of the Rings. It is also one of the arias most nominated by their peers for inclusion in this showcase. In this imagined operatic adaptation, we turn to uh, a later episode in the book, The Fellowship of the Rings, Frodo offers the One Ring, the source of immense corrupting power, to the elf lady Galadriel. She is greatly tempted by the ring, a power she could use to reshape the world for good. This is Galadriel's test.
in this second aria from an imagined operatic adaptation of the lord of the rings we fast forward to one of the great battles in the return of the king the horse soldiers of rohan have raced to the land of gondor to save their ally from a marauding army of orcs right at their moment of victory however the evil witch king ringwraith and lord of the nazgul swoops down on a winged serpent knocking king theoden from his horse and sending the riders of rohan fleeing with his dark magic only one warrior bars the witch king from killing theoden his niece eowyn who has disguised herself as a man to join the fighting eowyn must reveal herself to her uncle and face the fearsome foe alone this is Lady of the Shield Arm, Rise Up, with lyrics by Mariana Motnewirth and music by Delshawn Taylor.
Of all the ways to react to stress, emotional eating is one of the most insidious. A well-timed meal can help us fight off life's challenges, but eating too much can leave us feeling even worse than we started. And if we can rationalize it, the human stress response makes all of those fat fried foods smell and taste so, so good. To be fair, Margaret, the protagonist in the next aria, has a lot to deal with, starting with a potential extinction level event on Earth and being sent into space on a desperate mission to colonize another planet. Did I mention that she's a 19 year old college student a soft butch with a B plus GPA and a habit of saying a little less than she feels. And there's a woman she has a crush on who she realizes she might never ever see again, even if, make that, especially if this space mission succeeds. That's a lot to keep your mind on with a top secret designation. So when Margaret heads home for one last time with her family at a 4th of July barbecue, the food has never seemed quite so tempting. This is Shut My Mouth With Meat from Three Cadets, libretto by Megan Cohen, music by Greg Nahabanian. <laughs>
Running away and joining the circus fills many children's dreams. In this aria for mezzo-soprano, commissioned by opera singer aerialist Courtney Kaiser, our protagonist already did that. Now, however, she faces a turning point. Her performing partner dropped her mid-act, shattering trust and injuring her in the process. Her life and choices come into stark perspective as she wonders, should she stay or should she go? This is Away with the Circus from the imagined opera Natalia and Sons, words by Megan Cohen and music by Spicer Carr. Fuck your stock, fucking hurts, fucking fuck, fucking hearts. It's fine. Why do I part on so much glitter? Fuck it's really fucking hurt. He fucking dropped me. Fucking fuck it, fucking hurt. Fucking fuck of sparkling bullshit. Sparkling bullshit. Fucking fuck. needs more horror. Given the dramatic and comedic possibilities, it's a little surprising that the list of bona fide horror operas is so short. Composers, librettists, this is your chance. This next piece was also commissioned by mezzo-soprano Courtney Kaiser to write a piece that practically drips with gothic horror and psychodrama. Librettist Carol Gow and composer Monica Chu took this prompt and headed off to Victorian Scotland, where all is not as it seems in the dreary, isolated countryside of Gladstone Manor. Our protagonist, Christine Kaplan, 
has come to rescue her family from poverty and debt by marrying her wealthy widowed cousin, Mr. Gladstone. Mr. Gladstone still mourns his deceased wife, Maria, whose spirit is literally haunting the house. Then, while Mr. Gladstone is away on a business trip, Christine discovers Maria's old diaries and becomes obsessed. This aria finds Christine at Gladstone Manor on her wedding day. To her surprise, she is presented with Maria's wedding dress and prays that Maria's spirit will possess her. And it does. This is Sulphur from Gladstone Manor, libretto by Carol Gao and music by Monica Chu.
all-time favorite sci-fi heroines. One of the things I love about Aliens is when you meet the, the crew, you don't really know who it is of all these crew members who's going to have the strength and the convictions to make the right calls to protect people. And it ends up being Ripley, even though people don't really listen to her. But she makes us these series of smart decisions. She sees things clearly. And I love the idea of bringing that kind of strong feminist perspective into opera. We really need it. Um, and also the idea of setting opera in space, of having these kinds of actions like setting a self-destruct or going after an alien to bring that onto the opera stage, I think would be incredibly exciting to do in a full production. to sing this aria about Major Kira from Deep Space Nine because Kira to me is this ultimate well-rounded character, kind of the opposite of what women are often asked <laughs> to play in traditional opera, which is often kind of a cookie cutter, damsel in distress. And Kira is, she's not that at all. She's empowered, she's a warrior, but she's also capable of great tenderness and kindness. She's capable of having fun, 
of enjoying her sexuality. And what you see in this aria is, you know, her wrestling with the guilt she feels over actions that she took in the Bajoran resistance. So it's a really wonderful portrait of a well-rounded human character. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the ARIA Institute Showcase Concert. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Before we go, I'd like to let you know what's coming up next for Really Spicy Opera. We have another ARIA Institute planned for June. It is the soprano edition, and we also are planning a chamber opera edition, which is a big undertaking, but it's going to be extremely exciting. Um, on top of that, we are going to do opera outreach concerts, a children's opera, and some creation workshops in Madagascar this June. And a showcase concert is planned in Paris for the winter of this year. 
So be sure to like us on Instagram and Facebook to stay up to date with what's coming next. And thank you again for tuning in. And a big, big thank you to our composers and our librettists. Thank you for your hard work. What a fantastic group. What fantastic music came out of you. So take care and we'll see you next time.